Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to Infinity Train, Season 2, Episodes 9 and 10, the final two episodes of the season. And the season finally got started in its second half. The first half was, I'll be completely honest, kind of slow and boring. Um, and, and the characters just weren't as interesting as in Season 1. And again, maybe that's just me, and maybe seasons three and four will be much better. But as of now, like, even with the exciting stuff that has happened in these recent episodes, season two, in general, just hasn't been as good for me. Um, and again, that's not saying it's been bad. No, anything, but it's still been very good. It's just not been as good. It's not been to the level that, for me, the, se the first season was. Um, for me, season one was on such a grand higher level than I expected that it was actually shocking how good it was. I really didn't expect it to be as good as it was. And because of that, the fact that this second season is just nowhere near its level is disappointing, if nothing else. Um, but I, I'm definitely interested to see how this ends nonetheless, because we've gotten some big stuff here at the end, like I said. Um, one of the Flex is dead. Um, killed by Mere Tulip, basically. Um, and finished off for sure by her. The other Fleck is somewhere, probably to return in these last two episodes. And Jesse has gone back. He left. And MT was going to go with him, but she couldn't. It wasn't allowed. She wasn't allowed to exit through the portal. So now the question is, as, is what's going to happen next? I, I don't know. We'll just have to see. So, yeah. In the meantime, um... I don't really have much else to say, but I will say, since this is the last uh, two episodes of the season, we will obviously be taking a break before we get to season two. And in the meantime, uh, I do have the next show already picked out. I will announce it in the afterthoughts. Uh, so continue to watch uh, until the end of the afterthoughts for the reveal of what is going to replace this. Um... And it will just basically start right away next week. So, yeah. Um, in the meantime, though, like I said, I don't really have anything else to say going into this. It's just we're going to have to see how this ends for me to really form my final thoughts on this season. Um, but I, I, I just I don't think it's going to be able to really help itself get to that point that season one was at. It's not, it's not going to be as good as season one. I, I don't think there's anything you can do to change that at this point. But I'm still hoping that it's still a very good finale. Because, again, the, this, this season's still been very good. So still hoping for the best and still enjoying it. Um, but that being said, let's get on with it. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episodes. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, I want to reiterate what I said in the pre -thought that that this season was great. It, it was really good, but it just missed the bar in terms of in, in terms of the quality of season one. And, and I want to reiterate that. I want to make sure you guys know that I did enjoy this so that th what I'm going to say next 
doesn't sound like I'm just being too harsh or what. This finale was underwhelming. And again, maybe it's because of how, se how good season one was. But I think the problem for me with this, and, and again, it wasn't bad by any means. It was very good. But it was underwhelming from what I wanted it to be. Because it felt too easy. It felt like too simple of a solution. The stakes it by the end here didn't really feel like they were just any, like they were stakes. It didn't feel like there was any kind of actual danger from this last fleck. It didn't seem like there was any question about whether or not uh, MT would get out or Lake now. Um, well, I'll get into that in a bit. It it came across as extremely obvious. And that's the thing. It didn't surprise me at all. It didn't do anything to throw me off or to make me even doubt. There was not a time in these last two episodes that I, I questioned whether or not she would get off. I knew she would get off the entire time. Even at those points where it was, like, trying to throw doubt in your face, like, telling you, like, oh, but she can't get off because she's not a passenger, she doesn't have a number and everything. It's like, I knew, you knew there was going to be some kind of solution. And it's like, I'm fine with a happy ending. That's not the issue. Season one had a happy ending. But my issue is when... It just feels hollow. It just feels like they're that I don't know. I don't know if it's just me. But comparative to season one, especially, it just feels like there wasn't any stakes in the end. At the end of season one, I was actually questioning whether or not Tulip would get back. I always believed she would, but I, I actually had started to question things. I was wondering if maybe that was going to be a thing that continued forward in the series. And there are also points at the by the end of uh, season one where I was looking at it, I was questioning a lot of it. It, it was in, it engaged me in a way that season two hadn't, and because of that, it's just I never felt like. There was any wonder with this season. I never felt like there was any question about how it was going to end. Especially with MT's character. Her, her entire character arc this season has been about forging her own identity. Forging her own identity, culminating not just in escaping the train, but in creating a new life for herself outside of it, starting with a name. A true name that separates her from Tulip completely. And that's great. That's wonderful. But at the same time, there's just... It just doesn't feel like it lent itself to a big, exciting conclusion. And that's, in, in a way, why we didn't get one. And that's disappointing. I wanted a big, exciting conclusion. I wanted it to feel like there were stakes. I wanted it to feel like there were questions about how this was going to work out in the end. And the only thing I was questioning at the end there was, like, exactly what was going to happen to get her off the train. I Again, I knew she was going to get off the train 100%. I, it, it was just a question of how. And even then, it's like I had so many thoughts in my head, and I, I figure it. My biggest thought was in the end, one one was just going to let it happen, was just going to choose to let it happen, which is basically what happened, because she didn't actually have a number. It was literally just a reflection. She didn't have a number. One one just decided to let her go, like even the way he said it, it's like, yeah, all right. 
it, it was pretty much just a spur of the moment decision. I don't think he actually thought she had a number there. So because of that, I don't know. It's just, I've heard some people say that Lake's journey makes them think of trans people. And I've heard that a lot of trans people have connected to her character. And I can see why now, especially with the name thing coming up in this ep in this final episode. Um, just the experience of discovering yourself, or I guess rediscovering yourself, forging your own identity away from what was assigned to you. Um, choosing your name and everything. It's like, yeah, I, I can very much see what people are saying with that. Um, and by the way, the name Lake was spoiled for me. I didn't know it was MT. But um, it, it had been, someone had said in the comments, like they were like mentioning favorite characters and stuff, and they mentioned the name Lake. And I, I was looking at it like, I don't know who that is. But it's, but now I clearly know. <laughs> so please, for the future, don't, don't spoil names like that for me, because that, that does count as a spoiler, even if, even if I don't know who they are. It's just like, I, I, I just, I don't want to be spoiled on anything. I don't want a possible spoiler on anything. I want to discover things as they come. <laughs> um, but yeah, this second Fleck who was still there, one, he always seemed like the least threatening of the two in the first place. So the fact that he was the one coming back in the end, he never felt like a threat. I was never concerned for him, about him at all. I never felt that... MT was in trouble there. Uh, he, he was always going to go out. <laughs> um, and and it, we had the human farm and the memories and all that. That was interesting, I will admit. But that was interesting because that's the kind of stuff I wanted to know. I, I mentioned before that I wanted to know more about the inner workings of the train and stuff, and we get to see that here. We get to see that how the pa what happens with the passengers after they arrive on the train, basically. What happens to them is that they're put in these pods, shipped over to this farm where their memories are farmed, and they're given a number based on their memories, based on their actions and whatnot in life. Um, as we saw that one businessman who seemed like he was probably a piece of crap, <laughs> he got a really big number, which means that there was a lot to fix, because that is the point of the train, to fix people, to help them overcome their issues and become better because of it. Now, we still don't know, like, why this is the case or how the Infinity Train got made or any of that, but we'll see maybe in the future. Um, maybe not. It might not ever be revealed. Because um, I know, like, there there's only four seasons and it was canceled and everything, so there's not going to be any more unless some someone else picks it up. But I don't know. We'll have to see. <laughs> um, but yeah, that part was very interesting, finding out about all of that. Even how the numbers are given and the fact that you can't, like, trick the machine even and put your hand above the person's. Like, that stuff is the kind of stuff I wanted to see and the kind of stuff that I was excited to see here. Um, and I'm glad that we got those answers because that's something I didn't expect. I didn't expect to get those answers, especially this strongly. So that, that I like. I mean, again, I, I did like all of this, by the way. I, I very much did. It's just less so than season one by a notable degree. Um, I, I've been asked multiple times in the comments now, favorite train, favorite character uh, from the season or just in general. Um, I'm just going to say like right here now, I don't know. Don't don't ask me who my favorite character or train car was for this season or the series as a whole. I don't know. I would have to go through everything again and, and look at it all and try to figure that out. And, and that would take a bit of time. I don't plan on doing that right away, right now. Um, maybe I'll do that after I finish the series. 
um, all four seasons, maybe then I'll make a list of my favorite train cars or my favorite characters or whatnot. But one, it's just too early to say. And two, I, just, I, I don't remember every little thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. Definitely some interesting stuff here, but at the same time, also some stuff that I just felt like could have been handled better or like I just feel like there could have been more stakes and better stakes and better just handling of the stakes. That's a big thing for me with this finale for sure. Um, and so yeah, again, just really hammering it in. I did like it. I did. It was just extremely disappointing compared to season one. It, it was just, it, it, like, if I were to rank them on a numerical scale and say season one was like a 100, season two would probably be in the early 70s, honestly. Which is still good. It's still pretty damn good. But it's like, it, it just, it doesn't compare. It does not compare. <sighs> and, and I really wish it did. And I really tried to like it more than I did. But I, again, I still liked it very much. Very much. I can't hammer that in enough. I will keep hammering that in, damn it. <laughs> um, if I had to say, like, favorite parts of the season just off the top of my head, again, just finding out more about the train... Um, here at the end, and I did really like the aspect they brought in with this, uh, I don't remember what they called themselves, but this group, this group of, uh, people who seem to worship the old conductor, the fake conductor who had taken over for 1-1, I don't remember her name, um, but these people are, were a very interesting group, and I, and I wish we kind of got more of them, I, I kind of wish they were in more of the season. Um, so, so I'm a little disappointed that they were honestly so minor in the long run. Um, they were basically just another obstacle, just another, uh, set of people on the cars to deal with. No different than, like, dealing with the cat in season one, who also returned in season two. <laughs> and, uh, was actually connected to this new group because it was the same episode that they were introduced. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm definitely interested to see where this series goes. I know each season is its own thing, so I don't know exactly what season three will be about. I do know what I assume the main character looks like. Um, I'll leave it at that, but I, I don't know any details. I, I just know what they look like. Um, and we'll kind of, we'll have to see when we actually get to it. But in the meantime... I did say in the afterthoughts I would reveal what is replacing Infinity Train for now. Like I said, we'll get back to Infinity Train with Season 3 somewhere down the road. Hopefully not. At, it won't be too long. But now we are going to move on. And so the question is, what are we moving on to? Well, the, uh, what we're replacing it with is a series that I've wanted to get back to for a little bit now. And... Something that I've heard actually gets better in its second season. And that's saying something because it was really damn good in its first. And that is Harley Quinn. That's right. Starting next week, we will be returning to Harley Quinn with season two. And I'm very excited for this. I loved season one. It was so damn funny. Uh, it, great voice actors, great plot points, and a really epic finale. Like, damn, that finale was good. <laughs> um, I, I've even rewatched uh, parts of it here and there um, throughout the throughout the time since I reacted to it, and it's like it's still really good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess. We'll get to find out what's going to happen next with Harley, Ivy, the crew, everyone. And I'm excited. I am very excited for what we got next. 
Um, I do know a couple things about season two. Um, specifically, I do know about a character that arrives in season two, as well as I know like the the very minimal, like the smallest bit of information on a certain plot point. I have no idea how it occurs or what like exactly happens. I just know that there's a certain plot point that I do know about that I was spoiled on. And again, and that kind of goes with the other character too. There's, there's a character I do I was spoiled on. I don't know how they're introduced. I don't know like what their role is. I just know they're in it. So and it's not that big of a surprise if you like if you're a fan of like the Batman comics and whatnot, if you if you or just any of the series or movies or anything, it's like it, it's not like a surprise of like oh this character happens to be in it or whatnot. Um, sometimes they will surprise you, like with uh, season one with Maxi Zeus, because that one I definitely wasn't expecting. But <laughs> yeah, it's like a lot of these characters. It's like oh yeah, you, you could probably imagine them showing up at some point or another. Um, but either way, either way, I I'll get more into that next week once we start Season 2. Um, I'm hoping to like it, and I'm hoping that what people are saying is true, and that it does get much better with Season 2. So, going back to Infinity Train, though, tell me in the comments below what you thought of these final two episodes of Season 2 of Infinity Train, and thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, we will begin Season 3 somewhere down the line, hopefully not too long, um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, tell me your thoughts, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.